What's up, everybody? Tyson Roush. Let's talk Jets. Hope everybody's having an excellent week. We have some news today from OTAs where Coach Sala announced that they will not be having mandatory minicamp next week. Uh, his reasoning is that he feels comfortable with the preparation and all the practices so far. They also got a report early for the Hall of Fame game. So he's like, you know what? We feel like we're in a good spot. Stay healthy. Stay out of trouble. And we'll see you guys, you know, for training camp. I'm not going to give you any hot reaction here. Like, I'm not going to call Sala soft. You got. I'm wondering two things. I'm wondering what the overall team attendance was throughout this. I mean, you saw Rodgers there a lot. You saw Brees and Garrett and Sauce Gardner. So you got to figure all the primary playmakers were all there. The other thing is, too, is they have a veteran council, too. They have like a leadership council. You got to figure they met with Sal as well. They all discussed it. I'm thinking if the offense was being installed and looked like shit, they'd probably be like, you know what, we got to get those practices in. I'm sure Aaron Rodgers feels comfortable, and he probably wants a break, too. He's been here most of the, most of the offseason since he's been traded for. So no hot take there. Um, some other notes. Uh, Carl Lawson looks huge, man. And this is year two after his injuries where he could be primed for an enormous year. I'm a Carl Lawson fan. Like I said in my previous videos, he's adamant. He's going to get double-digit sacks. I think when you have, you know, all that you have that force in the middle with Quinnen and John Franklin Myers, possibly Michael Clemens now, and Woods and Jefferson, the outside is going to open up for so many guys. You have, you know, emerging Carl Lawson. You could spell him with Huff and Jermaine Johnson and, you know, McDonald. Like, there's so many different things that, you know, and I think Carl Lawson, can be, he could be a closer, too. Like, he's a guy in the fourth quarter, like we saw in glimpses last year, that gets you the monstrous sack or the big pressure that forces somebody else into a sack. So I'm excited for Lawson. Obviously, the key with him is always health, but he looks enormous, man. The other thing, too, is Sala talked today about Quinn and Williams' contract, and Every time they talk about Quinn and Williams' contract, it's almost like a foregone conclusion that's going to get done. So my first question is, I wonder if Aaron Rodgers restructuring his contract is holding this up at all. Manipulating numbers, everything else, because Sala seemed pretty convinced this will get done by training camp. Now, was this just lip service to buy time until July and August that nobody's going to bother him? Or is it just going to get done? And I continue to think this is a no-brainer move for the Jets. Quinn's heading into the prime of his career, arguably one of the best in his position. You know what the market is. A little bit less than Aaron Donald and a little more than everybody else. Get it done. If he doesn't want, I'm, I'm guessing the Jets probably want to offer him five years. He may want three. Give him four. Just get it done. You don't need a distraction. You need him here. The team wants him. I mean, it just, it just makes so much sense and dollars and cents. But Salah seemed pretty convinced. Douglas seems pretty convinced it gets done. I hope it does. The next thing is Sal talked about Dwayne Brown again. And this Dwayne Brown situation is very interesting because he's a left tackle. Let's call it what he is. He doesn't play right tackle. They asked him about it. He said he maybe played in college or high school, which was 15, 18 years ago, 20 years ago. So I think if you're, Sal keeps saying you're going to play the best five, and it's just Dwayne Brown's one of your best five, he's your left tackle. And Mekhi Beckton's either got to play right tackle or what are they going to do? Is it going to become a problem? But uh, if the question keeps coming up and the answer is the same and the hints are out there, the only one thing that can hold this up is that Dwayne Brown's not ready for the start of training camp. How much time is he going to miss? Does he miss two weeks, three weeks? Will he be actually ready to play? And that could be the curveball. So stay tuned for that. But this situation has a potential. I'm wondering, I'm wondering how Makai handles this, man. If, he, if he's forced to play right tackle, does he embrace it and give the best and say, you know what? I want to make my, you know, this is a contract here. I'm going to go for it. Does he ask for a trade? Like, how does this all work out? But stay tuned for that. The last topic is Dalvin Cook, where obviously this is the time of year where it's a very slow news time where people are throwing things against the wall and everybody's chasing after it. Every free agent move the Jets have made over the past, ever since Joe Douglas has been here, has caught everybody by surprise. So now you're going to tell me that the Jets have revealed their hand and they've already got a deal done with Dalvin Cook. I don't believe any of that. I think it's somebody trying to put pieces together. But in terms of the Jets should look into him if he's released, my answer is 1,000% yes. And here's the reason why. I love Brees Hall. But I also realize that Brees Hall may not be 100% by week one. What if he goes on PUP for the first four weeks? How do you handle him? And if, if he's not ready, or if he's only can give him, if only give him eight to ten carries a game, do you feel comfortable with Michael Carter and Zonovan Knight and Izzy? Or do you need a veteran here? And my answer is I want a veteran, man. Like, I've been saying this before Dalvin Cook was even available. I wanted Kareem Hunt. I wanted Leonard Fournette. I, you know, I'd even take Ezekiel Elliott in terms of the guy that could pick up the blitz in the backfield, 
a leader, can get you the short yards, can get you the tough yards. So you add in Dalvin Cook, 28 years old, four 1,000-yard uh, seasons. He's, he's a home run guy, man. He can just, he can, he's not, you know, he's not, I know like like, like Madison in uh, Minnesota. Cook's a very good running back, man. Great locker room guy. Great, great leader. Did I say great? Great leader. So to not, I mean, I wouldn't trade for him. If he becomes available, I 100% look into him. Because the Jets are all in, man. Like, if you have a one-two combo of Brees Hall and, and Dalvin Cook, what are you mad about that? It's a significant upgrade. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. And the other thing, too, is, like, the Jets don't get Dalvin Cook. They don't look into him. He could go to Miami. And you're going to see him twice this year then. So, I mean, I don't look – I don't – the Jets are not in a position right now, I think, where you're at running back or wide receiver where you can just say, hey, you know what, we're good. You can always upgrade. It comes to playmakers and offense. You want to score as many points as humanly possible. If he gives you a way to do that, do it. In terms of the cap space, the Jets have cap space. Cap space is not an issue. So I'm not worried about that. If you got to sell your soul for the next two years to bring in prominent playmakers to get you to that next level, the next level of meaning the championship game, the Super Bowl. I mean, I'm treating the Jets like a very good team. If you can go from you know very good to great, make that move. And Dalvin Cook can get you there. And if you don't want to go Dalvin Cook, I still would bring in another veteran running back. I think right now... They'll probably hold off until a training camp to see what all these guys, all these guys are going to do, see where Brees Hall is at, what kind of shape is Michael Carter in. There's always injuries as well, which is, it just happens. So, But I, I would not you know, look away from running back at all. And then the, you know, the whole Hopkins thing where I think they said now it's down to the Bills, Patriots, and Chiefs. It's interesting the Jets aren't interested, man. I, I get you know, you're, you're one Garrett Wilson injury away from being like, all right, is Alan Lazard your number one? You know, is Corey Davis number one? Like, how are you looking at it? To not even be, not even consider it, the Jets were kind of arrogant about it. We're like, you know, we're not interested. Our wide receivers are, are good, unless that's just trying to get everybody off their scent and they're actually trying to make a move for them. So, I mean, I, I'm always looking to upgrade positions, man. So, we'll see what happens there as well. Other than that, I think I covered everything. I'm trying to rush, man, because i got to go to the gym. But I uh, hope everybody's well. We'll be back live Monday night with another special guest. Um, and if you have any other people that you want me to interview, Monday nights at 8 o'clock, I'm trying to bring on different guests to interview. I'm going to start taking calls after that as well. If you have people you want me to bring on, I'm more than willing to bring people on, different analysts, different content creators. Just give me recommendations. Other than that, I'll talk to you later.